Assalamualaikum. Today, my group and I will present our topic, which is variation. But first of all, let me introduce our members. My name is Nur Shafia. My other group mates, Aida Shiyana, Nadia Nazila, Nuru Izati, and Siti Atma. Without wasting our time, let us move to the introduction. So, what is variation? Variation is an adjustment of the scope of work in a building contract in the form of an extension, removal, or exclusion from the original work. The changes to the original contract that happen in the construction projects are due to site condition, statutory requirements, changes in client's requirement, defective contract drawing, BQ, specification and etc., and poor cost control. Most forms of contract have provisions which will allow any necessary changes to be made during the construction process. Without the variation clause, changes to the original contract are not allowed. If changes to the work are necessary, a separate contract has to be drawn up and a new contract will replace the existing contract. If the contract is based on the PQ, the contractor has the right to claim under variation for carrying out the works that are not provided, and it will be measured in the PQ. And if the contract is based on drawings and specifications, the contractor doesn't have the right to claim under the variation for carrying out all the works incidental or necessary for the completion of the work, even though those works are not shown in the drawings and described in the specifications. Clause 24 Variation So here is the Clause 24.2 Clause 24.2, this clause focuses on the definition of the variation. Variation is defined as alterations or modification of the design, quality and quantity of the works in the contract document. It can be additions, omission or substitution of any works. There are around 5 categories that count as the variation of works, which are quantity, quality, design, removal of materials on the sites, and removal of the works executed. First, the change in quantity. So there is increase and also decrease in the quantities of certain work. For example, the SO order to add the number of air conditioning in the project due to the request from the client. Number two is the change in quality. So there is increase and also decrease in the quality in terms of the materials or item used. For example, the SO requests the contractor to change the grade of the concrete for column, okay, which is from grade 25 into grade 30. Next is the change in design. Okay, the change in designs it include the omission of the works, the additional works, the substitution works, the change in the level, position, dimension of the works, the change, uh, the change in the kind of material used in the works, and the change in the shape and colors of the works. Number four, the removal of materials on sites. The materials removed must be from the work intended originally. For example, the contractor bought the ceramic tile to be used as the floor finishes as stated in the contract. But then the SO gives the instruction to use the parquet instead. So therefore, the cost for removal of ceramic tiles bought onto the site can be claimed under the variation of works. Next is the removal of the works executed. Okay, works to be removed must have done according to the contract originally. The cost required to, re uh, to remove the works executed can be claimed. Okay, next, Clause 24.1. From here, Clause 24.1, it explains on the issuance of the instruction for variation by superintending officer. It discusses on the procedures and action that need to be taken after the issuance of the variation instructed. Here are the procedures of the variation. First, issuance of the written instruction from the SO. Second, the contractor carry out work according to the what is stated in the variation works. Third, the SO measures, value and certify the work done. Four, the employees pay the contractor for the variation works done. So, next, Clause 24.3. Normally, Clause 22.1 is used for design and build contract where the contractor is responsible for the designs of the work. Breathing both clause together, the contract is saying that even though the project, uh, the, the design and build contract puts the contractor responsible for the design of the project, 
But if the SO issues a variation order, the contractor must obey with the variation instructed. Even though the design is by the contractor, but at the end of the product, the final say falls into the client's hands. Next is clause 5.0, 5.1, power to issue instruction, 5.2, written instruction, 5.3, compliance to instruction. Okay, first instruction for variation, power to issue instruction. This clause explains that the SO has the power to issue instructions to cover not only variations, but many other areas for proper execution of work. Any other instructions for another person is not valid. Okay, next, written instruction. This clause explains that the instruction must be in writing. Written instructions will be part of the contract. Instructions can be oral, but must later be converted into written within 7 days. The contractor may have to bear the cost of complying to the oral instruction if the SO does not confirm the oral instruction within 7 days as the SO is not bound to do so. Okay, next, uh, compliance to instruction. So this is the clause. This clause basically explains that the contractor must start variation works once he receives written instructions from SO. SO will give notice to the contractor to start variation works if contractor does not start soon after receiving written instructions. If the contractor does not start version work within 7 days after receiving the notice, the SO will have two choices. First, execute the work departmentally. Next, is to appoint another contractor. Here you can see the timeline of the compliance to instruction. Let's continue with Clause 25, Valuation of Variation. Before that, I am Siti Asma. Okay, basically, here's the summary for clause 25, starting from measurement of valuation, uh, type of valuation, uh, and certifies of variation work. Okay, first, measurement of valuation. In clause 25.1, describe the SO responsibility to measure and value the variation work carried out by the contractor in a project. It is to enable payment in interim payment certification. While in clause 27.1, explain that the work must be measured during the valuation to be used as a variation. In case of limitation of information in drawing, the measurement will be carried out in the construction site together with the contractor. Let's say the contractor is not coming, the valuation is still valid. Second, valuation of variation in clause 25.1. First, contract rate or BQ rate in clause 25.1 A and C. It is similar character and executed under similar conditions. It is treated as omitted work. For example, different number of timber flush door. Second, adjusted contract in clause 25.1 B and C. Different character and executed under similar condition while original work is omitted and remaining item must be completed in different condition. For example, different length of lintel. Third, agreed rate. It is different character and executed under different condition. Same as uh, adjusted contract, it is must be completed in different condition. For example, build-out rate. In build-out rate, we must consider the material, level, equipment and machinery, and of course, profit and overhead. Lastly, daily work price in clause 25.2. It is a condition where the varied work cannot be accurately measured and valued. For example, demolition works. Under clause 25.2, it discusses the procedures in daily work price method and item calculated under daily work price method. Okay, the procedures start with contractors submit particulars within seven days after works executed. It is include the receipt, the particulars such as workmen, employed, plan, and material use. Second, the SO will verify the particulars. After that, the valuation included in interim payment certificates. Okay, uh, the item calculated is whether using shadow of day work rate in appendices of contract or if it's not stated in uh, shadow of day work rate, the actual cost incurred by contractor with the 15%
Kan allowance of profit will be used. Okay, lastly, certifies of variation work. In clause 25.3 requires the SO to certify the amount of variation order and make the necessary adjustments to the contract sum. Next is clause 29.0, the adjustment of the contract sum. This clause explains that the amount of the contract sum is certified by the SO and will change due to various reasons. For example, the fees and charges for supply of water, variations, rectification of errors in the bills of quantities, fluctuation of price, payment of prime cost sums, payment of provisional sums, testing of materials and wood cover-up, loss and expense, and the cost of disposal of fossil and others. It means that the SO is the only one who has the power to certify an adjusted contract sum. Next is Clause 2.2, Architect's Instruction. This clause basically explains that all architect's instruction must be in writing and titled Architect Instruction. And this clause mainly explains on the architect's power to use to issue the instruction AI and the confirmation of architect's instruction CAI. Other forms of written instruction including the drawings are AI if the contractor confirms them in writing confirmation of architect's instruction CAI which then will be confirmed later with AI by the architect. This means that instruction will not take effect unless the instruction entitled with AI or CAI regardless if it is in writing or others. And as you can see here, these are the differences between the architect's instruction and also SO instruction. Class 11.1, Definition of Variation Variation are the alteration or modification of design or quality or quantity of the wood from what have shown in the contract. The term variation also includes Clause 11.1a, the addition, omission, substitution of any words. Clause 11.1b, the alteration of the kind or standard of material or goods. Clause 11.1c, the removal from site of work, materials or goods that were formerly in accordance with the contract but which has been changed. Clause 11.1d, any changes to the provision in the contract with regards to any limitation of working hours any limitation of working space, access and use of the site and the execution of work in any specific order. Next, class 11.2, no variation required by architect should reshape contract. AI is issued by an architect to activate any variation in construction project. The architect has the right power to issue variation as long as within the scope of work under the contract. The AI may be given to vary the words, to postpone the words, or to sanction a variation. Next, clause 11.3, issue of variation after practical completion. Explanation, architect shall issue instruction of VO in writing before the issuance of CPC. Any VO issue after CPC is deemed to be invalid. Therefore, that particular VO must be included with obligation or compliance with the requirement of any appropriate authority and service provider. Clause 11.5 Valuation of Variation and Provisional Sum This clause explains all variations should now be measured by the QS. However, architect has to delegate down duties expressly to the common one that will take place for the relevant words that QS might not engage, such M&E words. But QS remain primarily responsible for the same. Contractor to provide QS with necessary assistance needed to carry work where any recording of site information or site measurement are carried out at the site. For example, adequate personnel and appliance or equipment for measuring the works. This is the timeline for valuation of variation. Next, clause 11.6, valuation rules. This clause explains the contractual provision for this class are basically similar to PWD standard form. However, there are differences stated in the class which are it requires the events in EDA 
D1 and 11.6 D2 need to be signed by the site agent and verified by the site staff which then be delivered to the architect and QS weekly with the final records deli delivered within 14 days after the work has been done. Next clause 11.7 Additional expenses caused by variation This clause can be confined to only such cases where the contractor can prove on reasonable ground that the variation has caused him to incur such, such additional expenses for which he will not be paid under any other provision in the contract including 11.6 Valuation Rules 11.7a Contractor giving a written notice of his intention to claim for additional expenses to the architect the notice submitted must be given not later than 28 days from the date of AI or CAI upon the claim. The claim should come with initial estimate and supported with necessary calculation. Architect has the right to demand for further details on the submission with specific deadlines. Why Clause 11.7b The submission of complete particular with necessary calculation within 28 days of completing such variation, it is meant to be sent to architect and QS in order to show proof on the claim. Contractor is deemed to ignore his right to any additional expenses if he fails to fulfill the requirement needed within the stipulated time frame given by architect. This is the timeline for claim for additional expenses. Class 11.8 Access to contractor books and documents To prove his claim for extra expenditure under Clause 11.7, the contractor must retain existing record and apply all information to the architect and QS. The documents are also accessible to the architect and QS. If required, the contractor should send a copy to the architect and QS at free of charge and all copies should be kept on hand until all allegations have been settled. In conclusion, during the construction, usually it may have the variation of work. Therefore, standard form that contain variation clauses is made to avoid any discrepancy happen in a construction contract for the very works. That's all from us. Thank you.